Hi YouTube family, this is Iris. Today is July 2nd, it's right after a nice, beautiful rain. I wanted to walk you all through how the garden is maturing. So this will be our July garden walkthrough. The butterfly bushes are just about to bloom and I'm very excited because they are illustrating. Remember, I bought these on clearance and I saw one that they are going to be purple and that is going to be awesome. So we lost the Euonymus and we have a new plant in the middle. We'll see if it gets a chance to grow in full. The Miss Kim Lilacs were cut black back after their bloom. And we'll see if they have another bloom for us as well. We have some hibiscus that were on clearance at the Big Blue Box store. Let's see how they perform. And then we have the plants around the compost. Now, for those of you that weren't here for the previous video, I literally cut back this sedum autumn joy aggressively to help it grow in more full. And it does look very nice. But that first week after I cut it back, I was like, uh-oh, what did I do? Here we're coming up the pathway. Again, we have the... Just any kind of floral design. I'm gonna save the best for last. I'm not gonna go over to the hydrangea lane just yet, but these butterfly bushes are gonna come in nicely. It'll be a nice uh, reset of color for the butterfly bushes amongst this valley of Alborite. So we're gonna come around if anyone has ideas about what to do with bird feeders, I love to feed the birds, but I don't want to pick up bird seeds or have vermin coming in the garden for their dropped seeds. This is that phantom hydrangea, and it looks like it is going to come into bloom soon. The garden walk is just, today is the second, it's on the 17th, so it is just um, 15 days away, two weeks, pardon my hand there. What I wanted to show you was that Dahlia, she is doing her thing. Wow, and more wow. And I've counted, we have about 13 Dahlias, uh, in full they've all come back not one rejected coming in so i have them protected because they do get thick and top heavy look at this guy isn't that beautiful that is just going to be amazing the um brown eyed seasons season brown eyes i can't remember but uh, they were looking a little upset that anybody was getting other love. I don't know, but once they got hydrated, they were much better. This sage has performed nicely. I'm gonna cut all this back. Hopefully the foliage will perk up. Otherwise, I'll need suggestions for what to do in this space during the garden walk. Cause if all of them are brown, that's not gonna work. So here's another Dahlia, here's another Dahlia. This right here, part in the sun, I won't reflect all the way up, is a Rose of Sharon that I braided. I really wanna hold this standard shape so we can get some height variations. Part in the sounds, but um, God bless the families that are being affected, whatever that might be. And then coming around, this Wygelia performed nicely and now she's just gonna offer this beautiful auburn foliage for the rest of the summer. And this juniper as well, getting full and lush. 
there is a dahlia back here. Maybe if I step in the shade, you all might see it a little better. But just starting to do her blooming. There's another one there. This sedum, I didn't cut back, so you can see it's quite tall. Um, this foxglove, I will cut back so that it's next round can join in the party. Well, this is my third bird feeder. I believe in looking out for nature, but I am not going to pick up seeds and I'm not going to fight squirrels. I will fight a squirrel, but I'm just saying. And look how full these guys have come in. For those of you that have not seen my previous videos, feel free to watch the garden awaken. Oh, here's a treat. The cactus is about to bloom. Again, it just rained, so things look a little, those are gonna open up. That's gonna be beautiful. I have to deadhead those peonies. But look at her. What? Is that not gorgeous? Gorgeous! So the potted plants are doing well. I have some caladiums. I thought they didn't like us. I refused to buy any at the store because I must have planted a, at least 12 bulbs and nobody was coming in and I was feeling really sad about it. I was feeling some kind of way. A can of lily, hopefully it'll bloom for us. Even this dahlia over here has awakened. I, I'm so appreciative how generous nature is. I wanna say that this is a day lily who was just in the soil when I repotted this pot. Let's see how things work out. This hibiscus, you know how they bloom similarly to the daylily, but um, you know, they bloom and then they close and then the next group of blossoms come into opening up for us. So that's exciting. The boxwoods part of my shadow around the patio are filling in nicely. I'm so excited about that. And then coming over this way, these are my caladiums. So there is something that nature teaches about that leave alone, leave it alone and let it be. So that's exciting. It rained and hailed and look what happened to the elephant ear leaves. Mmm, I'm a little sad about it. And there's nothing you can do. Just like life, there are things that happen and there's nothing you can do about it. Now you make the best of it. So hopefully they'll send out new babies in time for us to enjoy for the fourth. Guys, look what happened to the sunflower. Oh my. It did hail, but oh my word, darn it. It was gonna be huge. It was gonna be so big. I gotta figure out what to do about that. This was the other sunflower that was beyond the gate, if you don't recall. And I planted her in soil cause she was just too, hey, you gonna water me or not? So putting her in soil helped out. Oh, wow, that one lost its lead stem there. Son of a gun. And then coming over here, guys, y'all, this is just the most amazing therapeutic hobby you could ever venture into. When you catch a sale, like, these are marked down. You won't believe the price. Enjoy it. And then coming into the uh, the vegetable garden, when I say the first time I have ever, first time I have ever. So first time with a vegetable garden, last year we had, last year or the year before, we had tomatoes. And then we opted to use this apparatus as our vertical trellis 
I have I have three or four attempts at collards and that white moth works for the devil. So I've been replacing them because they're she's just eating them up. She's just eating them up completely. So I planted some herbs. We have some melons over here that trellis to give them some options and things that need to flow over can go in that opening of the bed. But we're keeping the lettuces. We'll see how the cucumbers do. We'll see how all these guys like where they're going. And then I walked you all through these um, vegetables. The biggest one, I mean, you know how the potatoes have been performing. They're a little weighed down because again, it rained, it hailed. But the corn, very exciting. And then um, I think I'm gonna clear some of this out because um, if the tomatoes are truly mature, they're gonna need some airflow. So if you come back this way with me, you'll see that these guys are becoming, because they're really right on their own. So let's see how this becomes. Um, the goji berries are growing in full. This is just so inviting to me. Now, to me it is. Let's see how hubby feels about it. The herbs are growing in nicely. And literally just wait for everything to go on clearance. That's what I decided I'm gonna do. Of course, each time I say I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> wait, let me get the gate. And then here goes, everything's a little way down. So I moved that Christmas cactus to this spot so it could um, just relax over here. It didn't require, it doesn't require a lot of, <gasps> a lot of water, but the black lace elderberry, and then all of these guys is the water, but they really are <laughs> gorgeous. So I moved those azalea shrubs to over here. And then I just make sure the rest that we're healing, pardon, the rest, I can't get in. The rest that we're healing, they greened right up with just a little bit of coffee beans you know, the residual coffee. I did lose one. Can you see it? That, that one's gone. But those are the garden beds, the smaller garden beds. And we'll come over here. That's what this side looks like. So the garden walk is just a little ways away, 10 days. But well, honestly, I really, I'll say 10 days, 14 days, but life still goes on. You still have to go to work, go to grocery store. You can't just sit in the garden and deadhead everything. But even these dahlias that were planted late in the season, at least in my opinion, and uh, April, I think, and they are gonna become nicely. I wasn't sure if this was gonna be too much shade. Coming around to the shade garden, we'll try to protect you all from as much sun as possible. This under here has been a lot of fun. And I recently rescued a, a um, hydrangea. So there are going to be just a few more plants. I want to conclude with coming up the shade garden, the elephant ears. Darn it. Look guys, they have, um, the hail hit them hard. Son of a gun. 
What you gonna do? We needed the rain, but darn it, darn it. I wonder if I should cut them off. Cause they're not gonna heal. Aw, poor babies. We'll see how they, how they mature. And look at the hydrangeas. They are truly blooming. I am so excited. This is the first year. We've been in our house over 20 years. You, you guys, I don't know. I just kept cutting them back. Like, obviously, I could show you how to better grow. <laughs> how to grow better, but no. I am so excited. So when they're in full bloom, I'll give you guys a nice picture. And then ending with the garden along the back of the house, I'll just say that my husband was very accurate. <laughs> to say, just place it up against the house. And every time he offers me a plant when we're at Home Depot or something, I do not say no. <laughs> so just wanted to share the current status of the garden with you all. This is gonna be a Wygelia clearance item. Again, I think it was $2, pardon my shadow some really beautiful plants. These day lilies are gonna come into bloom. And then, I don't know if you all can see, but we have two different types of mints in pots. And then we have some marigolds. And then coming around to the herbs. Look at here, guys, the grapes. This grapevine really, they, they took hold. I think they needed just a little bit of heat. They weren't gonna completely wake up without the heat. But look, the hail got that leaf really good too. And then the marigolds, pardon me, the mandevillas, they're doing pretty good. They just needed a whole bunch of heat and we'll conclude with the fruit trees. All we're asking them to do this year is grow in flush. Some berries and then just grow in flush. You do not have to bear fruit this year. All we need you to do is just grow, grow, grow. So for those of you who have just joined uh, the video family of walking through the evolution of a garden in zone 6A. Um, welcome and we will see you all next month, but enjoy the opportunity, try it. It doesn't have to be all in one month, one year. This was literally an evolution. So just wanted to encourage anyone who was thinking about what to do with their outdoor living space. And once you fall in love with a hobby, you can take it at your own speed. You don't have to hurry up and get it like your grandmother's garden or something. It really is just a beautiful space to enjoy, especially therapeutically. I'll leave it at that therapeutically. It's just a beautiful space to enjoy. So have a wonderful day and thank you for joining me for the July garden walkthrough. Have a wonderful day.